Hey, what's up guys, Zach with Wired Customs, and today I'm gonna to show you how to adjust early forward eccentric brakes. All right, so we're actually gonna be adjusting the brakes on this 40 Ford Coupe here. They're way out of uh, adjustment, so they need it really, really bad. I'm gonna take them off and wanna see what kind of condition they're in. I'm also gonna show you my piece that's um, off of the car, so you can see it a little bit closer, a little bit better. And I'm gonna blow this apart for you real quick, so as I'm demonstrating that, I'm gonna come back to this and show you what we're actually doing inside of the backing plate. So you can see just how out of adjustment this one is. It is hard to turn. It should not be that hard to turn, so let's knock these lug nuts off and see what we're working with. Okay, so it looks like we have a nice rebuild on this uh, brakes here. These look like they're uh, practically new. Um, I don't see any lubrication on any of the sliders, so we're gonna fix that. I just think these were just out of adjustment. All right, so I didn't know that this had the aftermarket hub type setup for it for the aftermarket drum, which is all still good, but this is still eccentric um, drums, which I'll show you what that means right after this. But since it had that type of hub, I put the wheel back on it so everything would be tight, as if it was when you're driving. So now when I spin this, I wanna make sure that the drum is completely tight against the hub. If you have like the earlier wide five, or if you have the original style hub, original style drum, uh, you do not need to put the wheel back on to adjust it, but I'm gonna do that just so everything stays flush and true how it's supposed to be as if it was driving down the road. Now what makes this eccentric is the eccentric adjuster. So, these are eccentric adjusters. That means when you spin these, there's a lobe on the back side that opens and shuts these brakes or pushes them further apart or draws them in closer together. These are the lower eccentrics. This is a little eccentric tool here. It's gonna take the nut off. So these have locking nuts so they don't spin once you take that off or loosen it up, not take it off. Um, you'd use this little wrench here to spin these. When you're spinning these, they also spin a cam, I guess you could call it, a brass cam in this instance, and that also pushes them further out or closer together. So we're actually going to adjust the top of the shoe and the bottom of the shoe. So here's the inside, and we're gonna take these off. Now, here's the view from the outside. We spin this adjuster, and when we spin it, that brass lobe is bigger on one side, smaller on the other. So that's how we're adjusting the centric. That little brass lobe sits inside the brake shoe. This one's off, so you can see what that one looks like. This one's on, so you can see what that one looks like. So that pushes it either farther out or closer in, depending on your adjustment. All right, so now I took that apart so you can see the upper centric. When you Spin this bolt around that's actually very rusty on this backing plate. You're going to be moving this lobe so it's going to be pushing the brake shoe further out or further in. Alright, so now that you know what's going on, I'm going to show you how to apply that to the car. So, what we're going to do is break free our two adjusters here on the bottom. Um, we're just going to back this nut out just as Tad. That's going to allow us to spin the bottom adjusters. The first thing I want to do is just reset it. So what I'm gonna do is adjust everything in so there's no contact on the drum at all so I can start from ground level. Nice offset wrench. Now, I don't wanna back them out too much because that brass fitting likes to pop out from the brake shoe itself. So we're going to try to keep that from happening. Then on this, 
this has a big spring on it, that's what keeps it from spinning itself. So there is no locking it and unlocking it. Okay, I've completely backed everything off and I can spin the hub nice and easy. And we want to do this one at a time. So I'm going to start with the bottom adjuster with my nice little grab wrench. And either one way is going to lock it, the other way is not going to lock it. So we're going to spin this until it completely stops it. That completely stops it, that's telling me which direction I need to spin this to lock and unlock it. These type of things, I don't just memorize it. I do too many things, probably the same thing as you guys. So I'm going to spin it back down to it spins free. And what we're going to do is just tighten it till it just starts to drag. And these are very subtle adjustments. Just starting to drag. Now I'm going to tighten that up. Now the problem is on some of the older ones, older cars, it's a little grummy. Spinning this tight, spinning this lock nut will spin the adjuster. So I'm going to watch it and I'm going to feel it to make sure it doesn't spin. And if it doesn't spin, we just locked in our first of four adjustments. So we're gonna, I lock that in, see how it feels. Just slight drag, that's how I like it. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side on the top. I'm going to spin it until it completely locks itself out and completely stops the car. That's completely stopped there. I'm going to lighten it up. And I'm just going to get it until it lightly drags. Too much. Lightly drags. Way better. Now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. And if you're doing the whole car, your arm's going to get a little tired. Now we're going to do this other bottom one. Now if you don't get these even side to side, you can slam on the brakes and it'll actually pull your steering wheel to one way or the other. So make sure you get both sides as even as possible. That's the first one. Only have to do that three more times. So there's a lot of misconception about these early Ford eccentric brakes. They have just as much stopping power as the more modern style drum brakes. The difference is they're not self-adjusting. You have to maintain them. You have to adjust them. It takes a little bit more extra time to adjust them. Something you might not know is, if you're more familiar with more modern type drum brakes, since these are eccentric and these sh shoes start to wear out, they'll be less and less capable of completely stopping that drum. Uh, you have to, in intervals, pull it into the shop, adjust the contact, just like how I showed you in this video, which is not that big of a deal, especially if they're in good condition like how this one was. It was very easy to break everything loose and adjust it. So you need to keep that in mind, guys, if you're going to be running early Fords with the early Ford um, brakes just like this. You need to pull it in the shop occasionally and adjust them to make sure the shoes can go out far enough to fully contact that drum to completely lock up your brakes. If you keep it maintained, if you keep paying attention on the, this style of brakes, they'll serve you just as good as more expensive brakes. Um, unless you're actually trying to hot rod and do a lot of crazy turning and road courses, stuff like that, that's obviously when discs... Um, are superior, but drum versus drums, um, old school style drum versus modern drum, they have just as much stopping power, they just require more hands on time. Also, I want to show you this awesome wrench that I have. I got this from millworkshotrod.com. Check them out. Um, every early Ford that I have has one of these in the glove box. This does not go in my toolbox. This always stays in the cars. You never know when something could happen and you need this wrench. Um, I'm not scared of these type of brakes. I feel completely confident once they're adjusted correctly and tightened back down um, that they work just as good as later brakes, but it's still smart to be safe about it and have this wrench on hand. 
Now obviously another one of your options is getting Bowling Brother backing plates that are fully loaded. All you have to do is unbolt this backing plate, throw on the Bowling Brothers backing plate, and you have more modern style drum brakes without getting too deep into rebuilding the whole front end and the whole rear axle, stuff like that. So that's another option for you guys to have. So take the knowledge that I give you and make your own choice. Now stop watching this video, get out in the garage, and get your shift together.